This is a story from the Gospel of John in the 21st chapter. They always ended up at Peter's house. He didn't know why, but they did. From the very beginning, they all seemed to take their cues from Peter. Today, Peter was frustrated, and he was short-tempered. Well, yeah, it had been three weeks since Jesus had been crucified, and since that wonderful morning when Mary came running to them, telling them this incredible, almost impossible news that he was alive again. And Peter had even seen Jesus twice since that day. And both times, Jesus had said to him, Peace be with you. But Peter was anything but at peace. He just didn't understand why they were still coming around him. I mean, here they all were, sitting in the house. Nathaniel, the Zebedee brothers, James and John, and two others. And they all seemed to be looking up at him, saying, What should we do next? Well, he wanted to scream at them, I have no idea what to do. But instead, all he told them was, I'm going fishing. Well, Thomas jumped up. He said, I'll go with you. Then the Zebedee brothers went and all the rest. They followed him down to the boats. By the time they got out onto the lake, it was growing dark. And they fished all night. And they didn't catch a thing. It was like the fish knew where they were going to throw the nets and swam to the other side of the lake just to taunt them. By the time the sun was coming up, Peter was ready to burst. Well, he didn't want to make a scene, and so he tried to calm himself. He began taking long, deep breaths in and out. And that's when he smelled it. Grilled fish. And the aroma uh, of rosemary and sage blended in. And Peter realized he was hungry. Well, he saw uh, about a hundred yards off, right on the shore, there was a man over a fire cooking the fish. How had he been able to catch anything? Well, the man waved to them, and Thomas waved back. And then the fellow called out, Have you caught anything? And they all shook their heads, No. Well, why don't you try throwing your nets to the right side of the boat? Well, again, everybody looked up at Peter. What should we do? Why were they looking to him all the time? Wasn't it obvious that he, he could not possibly be considered a leader? Didn't they remember? Oh, sure, he was the one who first stood up and said, You, you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And he was the one who very proudly said, I would never leave your side. I would die for you. And he was the one who stood by a coal fire warming his hands and swore up and down that he had never met Jesus. So why were they looking to him? All he told them was, why not? What difference is it going to make? And so they threw the nets over to that side. And almost immediately the boat began to lurch. They looked out. Fish. Hundreds of them. They were filling the nets as if they were begging to climb in. And they turned back to look and John, the one everyone liked, said, Peter, you know who that is, don't you? It's him. Peter didn't have to be told twice. He, he couldn't wait for the boat to be turned around or the, the nets to be pulled in. Jesus might be gone by then. And so he wrapped his, his, his waistcoat around him and dove into the water. He couldn't wait to see Jesus. When he got there to dry land, Jesus was cooking breakfast. Well, the fish were almost finished. And Jesus motioned for Peter to hand him the oven so he could start the bread. Peter picked up the metal dome and passed it to Jesus. He watched as Jesus put it over the flames. And when it heated up, Jesus poured the dough over. The bread cooked very quickly that way. And Jesus very gingerly lifted up the bread and flipped it over. About this time, the others came up from the boat. They gathered around. And Jesus looked up, up, up at them and said, Are you ready for breakfast? And then he began to break the bread. And he passed it around to each one of them. And when he came to Peter, he paused and said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter lowered his eyes. Yes, Lord, I love you. Then feed my sheep. Then Jesus went and got the fish. He began to break it up. And he handed that out to each of them. 
And when he came to Peter, he paused again. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Master, you know I do. Then feed my lambs. And then like a mother who always has to make sure all of the kids have gotten enough at the table before anyone gets up, Jesus took the rest of the food and he passed it around again. And when he got to Peter, he paused a third time. Simon, son of John, do you love me? This hurts so much. Sometimes the cure is just as hard as the sickness. Peter's eyes were filling up with tears. They could all see it. Finally, he answered, no pride, no bravado this time. Just submission, humility. And he said, Master, you know me. You know my heart. You know everything there is to know. You know I love you. Then tend to my sheep. And then Jesus sat down next to Peter, and he put his arm around him. Peter put his head on Jesus' shoulder, and he began to weep. They sat there for a long, long time. And when Peter's eyes were dry again, Jesus looked at him and said, Peter, when you were young, you used to dress yourself, and you would run off wherever you pleased. But the day is coming, Peter, when someone else will dress you, and they'll take you where you don't want to go. Do you understand? Peter looked into Jesus' eyes. I think I do. Good. I think you're ready, Peter. Don't worry about leaving. Just follow me. <laughs>